Hi everybody, this is Diane. I am going to be starting on a new journal, but I don't really, for the first time in a long time, I don't really feel like starting on the journal. I think it's because it's steampunk and I'm a little intimidated by the steampunk, although I've been wanting to do one for a while. I've done some in the past, but it's been a while. And, um, well, let me tell you the story behind why I'm going to do this. Um, do you remember when I did, re not too long ago, I did some journals made out of some ledger books, kind of wide ledger books, and I used uh, Dreams Etc.'s um, Easy Cut Ephemera with the black borders. I used a lot of that stuff in the journal, and she saw that video, and so she invited me to... Um, do a guest design team project for her and I was delighted um, so I selected the steampunk image um, journal kit and so there are two sets of pages so she sent me both sets of pages she also said she was going to send me some stamps that she had but she wasn't home she and her husband were away and it would be a few weeks and um, they should be home now, but I think she forgot. And I messaged her, but I didn't hear back from her. So I'm just going to get going. Um, I have stamps I can use anyway. But I'm still delighted <laughs> to be doing this design team project for her. Guest design team project. It's not going to be a long-term thing. So this is the paper that she sent me. I will link it below. And um, this lined paper, I think, is part of hers. I'm not sure if it's part of this kit or if it's just something I had on my in my files. They're really cool images. I won't show every single page. But you can see the colors and the um, really neat steampunk designs. So I think there are nine pages here. And I just decided to use this plain black book cover because it's about the right size. And it's actually one that I had in my stash of books to read. Um, it's called Once Upon a Time, and it is about Grace Kelly. So I'm going to take the cover off, and then I'm going to keep this to read it. I did that once before. I read a coverless book because I had taken the cover off to use. So that's what I have. And um, I went through my collection of ephemera that I have made and other, you know, like for other videos that I've never... I didn't have a specific project in mind when I made them, but I pulled out all the ones that would be great for steampunk. So that's just a card that I made and this little pocket made out of a coin envelope. And probably all of this stuff won't be used, but I just pulled it out. Hmm, I'm doing something similar to these today. Similar but different. Lots of fun things. And my cork ones. Remember when I did the cork stuff? This one has a charm hanging on it that I stamped on. So those are pieces that I made before that would work great for these journals. But I decided that until I really feel like I have a good day to get into really making the book, I'm just going to work on making ephemera. And a lot of it won't even make it into these journals because I'll have too much ephemera. But I just want to make the ephemera. Oh, that's another one that was made with my Cricut. So, I have a couple of Somerset-inspired ideas today, and I don't know if we'll get to both. We might not be able to do both in this video, but this was the inspiration piece. And I'm sure this is metal. It's a patinaed metal. And it's got a pretty lady and some flowers and this thing dangling off it in beads. Well, I don't have a piece of metal like that. And this is what I made. And this is what I used to make it with. It's a cupcake paper, cupcake, cupcake wrapper. So I'm going to show you what I did. And I, it was just totally an experiment. And I, I like the way it turned out. You could get a foiled cupcake liner. 
Um, but I kind of like putting my own silver on it because it wasn't exactly all even. But then that gets covered up anyway with some other... I use three different embossing powders. And excuse my hands. I've, I've been playing in here today. Um, so I use three different layers of embossing powder on this. And, well, let's just see. So I need to... I don't really need this glass mat here right now because that's for the next project. So I'm just going to cover this. Put this here. And here's my cupcake paper. I've got embossing powder on it already. I have Versamark. You can use embossing ink, but this is a Versamark watermark stamp pad, and you can emboss with that. It stays wet. So I'm just going to rub it all over this. It doesn't slide very easily because it's spongy. So now I've got Versamark on my paper, so the embossing powder will stick to that too. So I'm just going to flip it over. And I'm going to start with the silver embossing powder. Just brush a little off because I don't want it to be completely covered. So you're going to have to listen to the noise of my heat gun, but you get the fun of watching the silver turn different. You'll see it's different. See it go? That's the embossing powder melting and it will stick to the paper now. So, like I said, you could skip this step and just use a foiled silver uh, cupcake paper. So then I took a spongy thing and more Versamark and just kind of dabbed it on. And I put copper embossing powder on it. just brush some off. If I'm embossing an image, I don't brush off the embossing powder. But I want this to be not perfect. this terracotta tapestry color kind of a rust color but it's it's uh, multiple multiple colors in there so I'm just gonna brush it on just not perfectly covered hopefully I have enough on there that the embossing powder will stick you use whatever embossing powders you have on hand that might give you this metallic look So this is going to look completely different from that one. You just never know what you're going to come up with. I've got embossing powder on that. That's okay. So 
I'm just holding it down with my whatever this thing is called stylus so it, it doesn't move around with the air that's being blown on it. I would burn my finger to hold it with my finger. Okay, so those are the three layers of embossing powder I used. I didn't start out with the plan, I just was playing. Um, I don't see much of the copper, so I'm going to add a little more copper. I didn't do that the first time, but I think I need to this time. So you experiment on your own. Play around, do what you like. See what you need to add or cover up, whatever the case may be. I don't want to overwhelm the terracotta, so I'll take some of the copper off. If you could, if you could come up with a uh, verdigris color, like a copper and that green color that copper turns, it, um, that would be really cool. But I just didn't have any of the right colors of embossing powder for that. It still looks too pretty and shiny, so I'm going to take my um, archival ink and just rub it on here. So you get crinkly spots. That's going to be covered anyway. You can't see the center at all here, but you can see where it it uh, enhances the wrinkles and the and the ribs on the paper. And I I had just done the edges too with the black ink, but we're just going to move on. Okay, so I made my mess. Now, I had this uh, fellow stamped and cut out, and he came from Tim Holtz set, The Professor. Um, and I picked out some gears and things like that, and this just little random number. And I even had this little metal ring that I put around his goggle there. But I thought he didn't really stand out from the back, so that's why I added this scrap from an old record book or a ledger book. This is actually from a bridge score pad. And I didn't even distress it too much because the point was to make it stand out from the background. I think I put a little vintage photo around the edge and that was it. So I will put that on the background and then him on top of it. Now I need to find some more gears and things. This bunch of numbers and things that you would see on documents, this is a whole sheet full from uh, the old design shop. So I'm sure I'll, I'll be using those in a lot of projects. I 
I might have to find some more gears because if I use them up on the ephemera, I won't be able to use them on my cover or things like that. A little clock. I thought I had more gears than I do. I use a number. So then I'll just take some, I'll use my three in one glue, beacon three in one glue to glue down the paper pieces and I'll use glossy accents to glue down the metal pieces. I had already stamped on the back of that. Oh well. So the embossing adds some support and strength to the cupcake wrapper. All right, uh, one more thing, the little ring around his goggle, just for fun. I have to tell you guys about, uh, if you saw my flea market haul from Labor Day, it was so, so cool. Um, but I forgot, completely forgot to mention in that video that I met someone who watches my videos. She lives not far, less than half an hour from me, I believe. Um, and she and her daughter go to that to the stockyards flea market regularly, and they look for me. There's only one video on my channel that where you can see my face, and she had seen that recently. So I was shopping yesterday in that crowded, crowded flea market. What did that was the day she found me? The day that it was so crowded, and she just said are you Diane? And I said, yes. Diane H? And I said, yes. And I was trying to think, do I know you from school? But she said, my daughter and I watch you on YouTube. And I just thought that was so funny. I said, I said I'm a celebrity. And she said, you are. <laughs> so that was so fun that she found me and introduced herself to me. And then uh, I came, we talked a little bit, and then I came upon her again. And she was, look, oh my goodness, she was looking at an uh, old scrapbook full of greeting cards. And there was a tub of papers there that she had pulled it out of. And I thought, oh boy, when she's done there, I'm going to dig into that. But she was pulling things out that I would like. I said, well, I'm not going to buy them if you want them. And she said, no, no, they're for you. <laughs> she was finding things for me, and then she was going to go find me and let me know about them. <laughs> Oh, that was so fun and so sweet. So, hi, Becky. It was really nice to meet you. 
And I'm sorry I forgot to talk about it in the video yesterday. I was just trying to get through my haul. Okay, so the next Somerset inspired project is this. And these are tags with a tag, sideways tag and little tags. So there's three different sizes of tags there. And this is what I came up with for my version. It's a tag with a smaller tag across it and then little tags tucked in. So I am going to show you how I did this. That's why I said those um, other tags that I showed you that I already made, I was doing something similar and that's with the um, Distress Oxide process here. So I'm going to set these aside. They're pretty cool, aren't they? I like them. Put them in a safe place. Now I need my gl glass mat. So I already started this one, and I started this one too, and then I thought I need to stop because I need to show you what I'm doing. I just was, you know, once I put the color down for one tag, I was using it for all the tags. So all I did for this was put down vintage, no, it wasn't vintage photo. It was frayed burlap. And... There's frayed burlap and spiced marmalade, and rubbed it on, rubbed the tag in there. So I'm going to do the same technique, just use two different colors. So now I've got the orange and the, whoops, I'm sorry, the orange and the brown color down. I'm going to use two shades of blue. Looks green here, but that's because it mixed with the yellowish colors that I had. So I have Salty Ocean, and this is Peacock Feathers. And you don't have to have a glass mat to do this. You can just put it on any non-porous surface, like this kind of a mat that's underneath. This cutting mat would work. Um, just plastic. Wax paper would work. So then I just squirt it with water, and then I'll just lay the tag down in it, and pick it up. Wow, that really saturated it. But the distress oxide mixes together and does this little oxidation thing. It's, you know, it's fake. They're not metals that oxidize, but you know, they're, they're formulated to look oxidized. While I have the ink there, I'm going to color my two little white tags that I have. I'm going to cut some of these, cut the strings a little shorter. Now I have I want to I wanted to have a little more brown on here not so much blue so you get to see me correct that now I would normally mop this up with some other papers and not waste it but I want I need to move on see this is why I'm very colorful today so I'll put some vintage photo down It's not a lot, just enough to give me a little bit of brown. I don't even know if that was enough. You can see the 
it turned a uh, greenish color there because it mixed with the ink that's already on the tag. But look at the layer here. Okay, so I'm, I am going to add more texture to it, so I think that'll help, too. I got a couple of background stamps recently from my friend's yard sale, and it was hard to tell. There's no Im image on the back. It's hard to tell, but I thought they were ones that I would like, and I really love them. I used this one before and loved it. This is what it looks like when you use it, like full pattern. Isn't that great? And then I just used it lightly on these. It's not full coverage, but it's enough to add texture. I just have to find the ink pad that I used. Did I put it away? Pretty sure I used my stays on brown. Yep, I put it away. Here's my stays on brown. And I will just touch it down on here. Just gives an, a little bit of texture and adds some brown. And for these little tags, I used this. I'm gonna, I think we're done with the, oh no, we're not done with this. I'm gonna add some orange to these. I just had this no nozzle turn toward me, so I just sprayed myself. just set them aside to dry. I used the crosshatch pattern on the other background stamp on that. So then I just stamped an image on the tag. I used this funky little girl that's a Tim Holtz. I forgot the name of the set, but it's a Tim Holtz stamp. And then I used this bow bunny one, which didn't stamp very well, but this part's going to be covered for the other tag. So what shall I use for this tag? Maybe this guy on the fish. He's pretty cool. And I used my archival black to do these images. I have to have a little bit bigger block. I didn't think I'd have time to do both projects, but we're doing pretty good. I'm doing a really good job. Oh, sorry. Doing a really good job making a mess. stand up and press down. It's kind of hard when you put the color on and it warps the cardstock, the manila tag, and then you also have to compete with the background to get a good clear image. It's not very clear, but it's you can see it. <laughs> and I will take this fun tag. Now this is a tag from, um, I'm going to move this glass mat off, Victoria Designs, and I just trimmed off the edge that stuck off, and then I stamped this little row of Charlie Chaplin's. For me, they're steampunk guys, and then I stamped this little thing on there. I'm going to move this out of the way so we don't 
bang on it because we're going to do some banging. I am going to apply some eyelets to attach the tag to the big tag. So here's my hammer. Sorry if I bumped the camera. I'm going to find all my little tools. This is what pokes the holes. And this is what attaches the pilot. I think I have everything I need. Except I lost the little needle that I use. <clears throat> I use a little needle to get all the little circles of cardstock out of there. All right, we're set now. I'm going to poke the hole through both pieces at the same time so they're lined up perfectly. I say poke, but I'm going to hammer the hole. Now there's a hole. It's got the, sometimes I forget to get the pieces out of there and it becomes a pretty thick stack in there. Put the eyelet in there, flip it over, and use this tool. Set that right in the hole of the eyelet. Make sure this is straight and not twisted. So I would do that on all four corners of this tag. I'm not going to do it right now because I don't want you to have to endure the noise. But that's what I did on this tag. You can see it in all four corners. Oh, before I put it down, I had this wire on a spool, so I strung that in there. I don't know if I'll keep it in there <clears throat> because it's a little sharp. So unless I take something and like spiral the ends of the wire so that they're not poking, I'll probably just cut that out. But we'll see what I end up doing. So now I just have to put the little tags in there. And these, these are already done, so we'll just go with these. I didn't change the threads out. They got colored a little bit along with the tags. I'll just leave them in. So they just have two different steampunky looking light bulbs stamped on them. And the backs got some color from when we were coloring the tags. And I just leave them like that, and you can write on them. I just have to uh, apply another tag to this and stamp on these tags and these tags will be done. So I hope that this was a helpful tutorial or craft with me video. I'm look oh, I was looking for these so I could get them out and you could look again at what we made today. So these are a couple of my steampunk ephemera pieces that I made and I don't know what I'll what I'll make next. Um, I'll have to do something with those ocular lenses, the optometri op optometrist lenses that I found at the flea market yesterday. I have to do something with them too. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you tuning in and I hope that you would give this video a thumbs up and I would love it if you leave a comment and please feel free to share any of my videos. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Have a crafty day. Bye-bye.